In the span of a few short weeks, we've had a couple significant new entries pop into the $50 or so streaming device landscape. And with the holidays quickly approaching, now seemed like a great time to take stock and see which device or devices are at the top of the pile when it comes to the so-called mid-range category. If you're starting to get your holiday shopping underway and you're looking for some affordable cord cutting ideas, you've come to the right place. This is the best streaming devices for around $50. Meet our contestants. So like we said, we've got a couple new candidates in this particular price bracket. So let's first go over the devices we're focusing on here. First up is Amazon's long-awaited new Fire TV Stick 4K Max, which retails for $54.99. And yes, that's technically more than $50, but it seemed close enough to warrant including in this roundup. And you can check out our recent full review if you want to find out more. We'll have a link to that review in the video description down below. Next is another recent entry, the Roku Streaming Stick 4K, and this one replaces the outgoing Streaming Stick Plus and rings in at $49.99. And like the Fire TV Stick 4K Max, we also reviewed this recently, and yes, you can find that link down below in the video description as well. This next one's been around for a while now compared to our two newer entries. It's the Chromecast with Google TV. And here in fall of 2021, it remains a popular choice for cord cutters and streamers, thanks in part to that $49.99 price tag and the Google TV variant of the Android TV software on board. So those are the big three, so to speak, that we'll be focusing on in today's video. And if you're wondering, hey, what about this device or that device, we are planning on covering options in more affordable budget categories and the higher end territory in separate videos, so stay tuned for those. And we'll also have some honorable mentions to discuss toward the end of this video as well. But as of fall 2021, these are the main streaming devices we're considering in the $50-ish realm. That said, if you have a particular favorite, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. For now though, let's break down each of these streaming devices and see what's inside. Hardware Specs and Features Okay, so what does roughly $50 get you these days in the world of streaming devices? Well, in the case of the three we're looking at today, 50 bucks can secure you a compact 4K capable streaming device. In fact, while their form factors may not be exactly alike, the Fire TV Stick 4K Max, the Streaming Stick 4K, and the Chromecast with the Google TV all share some notable similarities. Perhaps the most obvious is that each of these streamers is meant to tuck away out of sight behind your TV. For the Fire TV Stick 4K Max and the Streaming Stick 4K, we're dealing with stick-style hardware with a built-in HDMI connection. So they're meant to plug straight into an open input on your TV and live their lives hidden from view, rather than sitting on your entertainment center like, say, an Apple TV 4K or a Roku Ultra. For the Chromecast with Google TV, the HDMI connection is attached via a flexible ribbon. It's also known as a dongle-style streaming device, but the goal is the same. It's a piece of hardware meant to just hang out behind your TV. So these streamers take a similar approach to ease of installation, but what about their actual hardware specs? Well, let's head to the charts. And we discussed this specific comparison briefly in our recent Fire TV Stick 4K Max review, but let's take a closer look. As you can see, we're dealing with three similarly priced and similarly capable streaming devices here. Regardless of which one you go with, you're getting 4K capable hardware that also supports high dynamic range video, including Dolby Vision and HDR10+. The Fire TV Stick 4K Max takes the lead when it comes to Wi-Fi thanks to its support for the newer Wi-Fi 6 standard, otherwise known as 802.11ax. Now you'll need a Wi-Fi 6 capable router to fully take advantage of that support, but it should definitely come in handy in homes with a lot of connected devices battling for bandwidth. The Max also supports Dolby Atmos processing, whereas the other two support Dolby Audio via HDMI pass-through. And while it may not be a deciding factor for very many people, both the Max and the Chromecast offer support for cloud-based gaming services. For the Max, Amazon offers its Luna gaming service. Meanwhile, Google Stadia service is available on the Chromecast. And if you're curious, we recently explored using Stadia on various Android TV devices, and you can check out that link in the video description down below. And it's also worth mentioning each of these entries comes bundled with a remote control that supports some level of voice input. Where these devices really start to differentiate themselves is with their respective operating systems, which we'll dig into in the next section. Operating Systems Compared While these streaming devices boast some similar feature sets, they set themselves apart through actual day-to-day -day use and their built-in software. For the Macs, we've got Amazon's Fire OS 7, and that includes the company's current user experience that features a navigation bar in the middle of the screen and a bevy of content suggestions sprinkled throughout. 
Meanwhile, the Chromecast with Google TV sports, as you might have guessed, Google TV. Now that's a variant of the current Android TV software and also features an artwork heavy interface that includes user suggestions and recommended content. Compared to those platforms, Roku's approach seems markedly different. The company's latest release, Roku OS 10.5, sticks to the tried and true visual design that's been part of Roku's DNA for years. And compared to Fire OS and Google TV, Roku OS can look a bit minimalist. The home menu is focused primarily on the apps themselves rather than the content first approach of the other two platforms. So you get a basic grid of apps rather than a steady stream of artwork from suggested shows and movies. Now, whether that minimalist approach is a good thing or a bad thing is really up to you, the actual user. Some folks might prefer the more visually intense approaches of Fire OS or Google TV. They do end up looking more modern in comparison, and depending on how you stream, you might actually appreciate the more frequent content suggestions and other info, including ads for various services and maybe other hardware. On the flip side, some folks might prefer less visual noise, so to speak, and might appreciate Roku's more understated approach. One person's dated interface is another person's tried and true design, so it's definitely worth considering which platform you think would appeal to you most when it comes time to purchase a new streaming device. Our advice? Well, if you just want to get to the streaming apps of your choice without a lot of external recommendations and without a whole lot of visual flair, the Roku interface is appealing. On the other hand, if you do appreciate the added info that Google TV or Fire OS bring to the table, they're definitely worth considering as well. But how do these $50 devices actually handle the role of a 4K streamer? Let's take a look. Performance Benchmarks Okay, we've established that each of these streaming devices runs on a different software platform, so let's see how they actually run those operating systems. After all, even the most advanced hardware can struggle if it's running unoptimized software. And to gauge that performance, we're turning to our performance benchmarking suite. That's where we fire up a series of apps in succession and time how long it takes to load each one. Our suite starts with Netflix, runs through several other apps, and then ends with loading Netflix one more time to see if the device can get it up and running any quicker the second time around. And now that we've set those ground rules, let's see how these $50 streaming devices performed. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot that separates these three streaming devices when it comes to our app loading benchmark. Now, there are some insights we can glean by digging into the numbers a little deeper, like how the Chromecast seems to lag behind on the second Netflix test, but it does make up for it with solid times elsewhere. In the end, it's rather interesting to see such performance parity among these similarly priced options. Honorable Mentions before we wrap up, we should definitely mention some of the other options out there that might be worth considering. Several of these actually weigh in well below the $50 price point and sometimes well, well below during a solid sale. In any case, if you're looking for an affordable streaming device, these are also worth checking out. The Roku Express 4K Plus slots in below the streaming stick 4K, but also offers support for 4K and HDR. Performance is generally similar, but it lacks some of the bells and whistles, including less advanced Wi-Fi and support for Dolby Vision. The long-running TiVo Stream 4K is still a viable compact option here in 2021. The $39.99 device runs on Android TV and supports Dolby Vision HDR. Meanwhile, Amazon's older Fire TV Stick 4K remains available even as the Max takes over at the top of the stack. The Fire TV Stick 4K still lists at $49.99, but Amazon's been discounting it throughout the holidays. Now, we're not sure exactly how long it'll stay on the market, but it's still available now and offers an enjoyable experience. That being said, if $54.99 is within reach, we'd opt for the newer Max, but we still wanted to mention the older 4K, just in case. Wrapping it all up. So in the end, we've got a trio of very capable streaming devices, all vying for the top spot in this $50 or so price range. As far as which one is the best, let's try to apply some numbers to this exercise, shall we? Okay, when it comes to price, we gave the Fire TV Stick 4K Max a very slightly lower score due to its $54.99 price tag. Yes, it's only $5 more, but it's still more expensive than the two main competitors. Conversely, we gave the Max full points for its feature set, thanks in part to the more advanced Wi-Fi 6 support. Each software platform has its own strengths and weaknesses, and some users will prefer one approach over another, so we considered that even. However, you should definitely feel free to substitute your own scores here, depending on which platform and which approach you think is most appealing. And as far as performance goes, we gave full points to our overall winner, and fewer points to the second and third place finishers. 
and in the end we arrived at a narrow victory for the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. However, feel free to tweak your own numbers here to better reflect your own interest and hopefully that helped you find the best fit for your own cord cutting needs. Now it's worth repeating that all three of these devices succeed in serving up 4K content at an affordable price. And the true best choice really depends a lot on you, the individual user. Some folks might prefer the bare bones approach that Roku uses, others might find it too static compared to the more dynamic content first menus on the Fire TV Stick 4K Max or the Chromecast with Google TV. So of course definitely keep your own preferences in mind when considering which of these devices to go for. Or naturally, if you're considering these as a gift for someone else, take their sensibilities into account before making a purchase. In any case, we hope we've helped you size up the current landscape of $50 or so streaming devices. And as always, thank you for watching. If you feel partial to any of these particular choices, let us know what you think in the comment section down below. You might be helping a potential cord cutter or streamer as they make purchases for the holiday season. And stay tuned, like I said earlier, we're aiming to round up streaming choices in other pricing categories soon, especially with the holiday shopping season officially upon us. For now though, my name is Philip Palermo. Be sure to click those like and subscribe buttons down below, and thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.